So, hello everyone and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. And let's get right back into where we left off. Okay, so... Nothing that could interest me. People use this cellar for storage. Exactly. You're looking for a rifle. Pile of rubbish. Just some old things. It's not here. Ordinary storage. Okay. That's a lot of doors to go snooping through. Just rubbish. That is very, very, very unsettling just to look right up into and... Tom's photograph. Let's try to get inside. Use the correct log picks to lift the log plates and create a sugar pan for the warden pin. Insert, select, exit. Uh, wait a minute. Left switch. Uh, switch to set of log picks. It's left shift. What the hell did I even just do? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't paying a bit of attention. That's gonna suck to have to do later. And now we're into the dip. That just looks so freaking creepy looking right in and just seeing a picture of a kid. Yeah, I know it's your son, but god damn, man. <laughs> I guess everything looks kind of creepy at this kind of setup. News clippings on lords in the education program. Why are they here? Newspaper article. The Daily Mirror. Lord Marsh in association with his friends. Lord Harrison, Lord Collins, is the co-founder of the special um, education program. And assisting the poor to build better lives and more certain futures, these three gentlemen surely help lift the level of our struggling society. Okay. Not just something that's kind of pissing ass. Okay. Very well, look. Dear Tom, if you're reading this letter, then it means I'm dead. It's a lot to lay down. I'm so sorry that things had to end up this way, but I had no other choice. You have to know that. You are a very smart boy, and I'm so proud of you. I hope one day you'll understand and you'll forgive me. Son, I love you so much. Don't despair. Try to be happy. Or you'll grow up to be a man someday. And sooner than you think. You won't be alone. Me and your mom. Me and your mom. I'll be looking over you from heaven. Your loving father. It's not good. Okay. Let's compare this list with the evidence that we found earlier. This is the list of selected participants for October's special education program. According to this poster, John Strobridge is missing. Let's compare them with people from Hearst documents. Okay. Name. Daniel Jones, Daniel Smith, David P Edgar Bristol, Edgar Evans. Uh, turn page left, turn page right, turn right. Robert Taylor, Robert Brown, William Thatcher. Oh, I should be looking for these people. Let's go back. Uh, Patrick Tanner, Thomas Kelly, William Thatcher, Staple. Tanner, Kelly, Thatcher, Staple. Tanner, 
Tanner Kelly, Th uh, Thatcher Staple, uh, Thomas Kelly, X, 10 of October. Something's telling me these X's are starting to mean that he, they're probably dead. John Snowbridge. It's not good. If you exit this part now, you're pro no. Wait, what? Oh, am I supposed to? I don't think so. Well, that's not what I was trying to do. This I was man to... appears in both documents. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, let's. Go. Here, I can find them easy now. Hmm. All the people in Marsh's document are marked and dated in George Hurst's files. Group B, Group B, Group B, Group A, Group C, Garfield Little, Harold Davies, Henry, Bridge. Okay. So it's just the list. They're probably not in the best of health. Dear George, I do understand you and it's so sad. Same as you, I can't find a job, not even the smallest thing. My children have nothing to eat. When I try to find anything, the bosses just say that they won't want wounded people working for them. Our military service means nothing. Our country used us in war, but now it has abandoned us. Nobody cares. Your friend Jack. It's getting heavy and heavier. An order. By Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, I, Frederick Russell Burnham, Major of the British Army, declare, the country extends its gratitude to George Hurst, an honorable soldier of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, for his variant military service. The British Army hereby awards him the Distinguished Conduct Medal and retires him due to the injuries sustained while in duty. Major Frederick Russell Burnham. Soft point. Uh, okay. Nothing in there. This case must have been full of cartridges. There was something on the stand. Maybe a rifle. And you're out of bullets. And you've got a list of people that are missing. This, uh, something happened, and it's not good. Okay, do you need a look? There was a rifle here. George Hurst took it with him. Same in the cellar. A map of Epping Forest. That was quick. Oh, Toby. Investigate the disappearance. Well, we are. So we got to go off Wolf Jack. So we're back to here. Farewell letter. Newspaper article. Concerning Lord Marsh and the education refused. Man, I wish everything would just stop <laughs> moving. Missing. Refused for a special job. Let's close this one. Some of the names on the list found in George are crossed out. The names are the same as those that were. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Everything stopped moving. So he doesn't think he was going there to kill him then. sure how they're connected okay some of the names from the list are crossed out newspaper article concerning was found in George Hirsch's cellar fused operations or just print your shirt how he took his okay this really is getting me dizzy like everything stopped moving Just get it to where I could read everything. No, stop moving. Okay. Preparations, Quarterman Club, Popper's List, her special job refused, and farewell letter. The wound has nothing to do with the club, the list, or any of that. Preparations. Well, I mean, I feel like the preparations in the farewell letter should because he's dead. took his rifle with him. Yes. I think we'll be okay for a second. It's time to gather more information because it's... Apparently there's another connection I haven't looked for yet. Newspaper article. Lord Marsh and his companions are members of the famous Quartermain Hunting Club. I don't think that has anything to do with anything. Disappeared while on a special job. Her special job and the farewell letter. Knew that he stood no chance of returning from his special job, therefore he wrote. Oh, I'm thinking that he's dead. I'm, I'm not thinking it's looking good. Okay. The wound. Oh, what is the poppers list? Some of the names. I don't think the wound has anything to do with it. Refused. I don't... Th I think that's it. I'd be pretty sure that's it. Brave Toby, best nose in the British Empire. So I guess I'm supposed to be still making connections out of everything. It doesn't seem to be that way though. It looks like the next thing I need to do would be to speak to, uh, speak to that guy again, Marsh. Boast about the special. Paper article concerning 
That has nothing to do with it. wanting to do that already. I didn't have to get that in. Okay. Let's go. So, what's going on? So, members of the special education program are missing. Knows something about it, he took his rifle with him. I'm thinking. Holmes, what are you doing here? What are you planning? A mission of my own. You must play the role of the conscientious doctor while I sneak inside Marsh's house. <laughs> That's the only way of helping little Tom. Sherlock, he's got a nice personality. <laughs> Can he look through the windows this time? I feel like this is just like the other. Okay, he can. He can't run. But he can look inside the window. The window is firmly shut. Can we go in the back door? Use the correct lock picks to lift the lock plates and create an unobstructed path for the warden. Okay. So. Oh, so. Probably just go down to something really low. There's no space for this lockpick. Okay, let me, uh... There's no space for this lockpick. Okay, so let's remove that. And then you go over here and select this one. Select that one. I think I understand the game now. There's no space for this lockpick. Okay, then let me stop. There's no space for this lockpick. Remove. Pick number three. Okay, okay, I understand it now. Can I help you? I came to visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. What am I doing? Oh, <laughs> you're so clumsy. Can you please not- I have to visit Lord Marsh and offer him my services. Fisher, please allow Dr. Watson to enter. If it Good works, job, it works. Watson. <laughs> Wait a minute. The rifle. Well, use rifles for hunting. Maybe. Lord Marsh is a keen hunter. Dear Lord Collins, it is clear to me that we could learn a great many things about running the Empire from those whom we trample underfoot. The same people whom we leave destitute and starving in the shadows of our own cities, at home or abroad. Lord Marsh. 
He doesn't sound that particularly happy. To this day, and by my estimation, the special education program has saved over 200 individuals from the gutter and elevated them to help form and support the critical foundations of our prosperous empire. This is largely thanks to the wisdom and foresight of Lord Marsh, who is a most progressive and wise politician. He's carried out a great deal of work in this field whilst ignoring the critics and any hindrance from his, from his arrogant colleagues who are so set in their ways. Man, none of this sounds... Nobody's nice. <laughs> what is this? Dear Lord Marsh, thanks to the special education program, my life has been changed completely. I didn't know how to thank you, so I picked you this flower. Thank you. Safe. Let's see how hard to crack this safe is. Don't mind me. Doctor, it appears that you were impatient to pay me another visit. Indeed. Will you allow me to examine you? A second opinion, so that the great Lord Marsh does not become the late Lord Marsh. <laughs> well, since you put it that way, very well. Shall I retire to your office, Lord Marsh? No, please, Doctor. I insist that you stay. I shall need your assistance. Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. Hide. Hide. Continue. Rotate the safe to locate the area of the clear sound feedback to form the correct safe combination. Okay, so what sound am I looking for? skip but okay so I guess we keep doing that Not too hard. I so admire all of these poppers. They seem to me such a breath of fresh air. Communicating with them is such a pleasure. 
and they are so smart, not like us. Perhaps it is they who should have been lords, and we the simple commoners. Oh, that wasn't sarcastic. November 7th. This means that the meeting is planned for today. <laughs> Dear Lord Marsh, on November 7th, our meeting starts at Grunson's Oak. I have attached a map to this letter so that you may find the place easily, Lord Collins. I guess we're going to be going to the park. Grunston's Oak. Okay. I guess we're going to Grunston's Oak. However, I'm not done snooping, am I? I can hide here. Hmm. I'd suggest that your current weakness is perhaps more than a simple case of influenza, Lord Marsh. <laughs> Tuberculosis. Where might your companion be, Dr. Watson? He is... Oh, he's uh, busy poking yeah. his nose into other people's business, yeah, I'm he, sure. He's, uh... <clears throat> Why are you want to steal? You My lord, know I'm sorry to interrupt, but I must remind you about your meeting. Is it already time? My apologies, Dr. Watson, but we are expected elsewhere. Might we offer you a lift? You are going out. I'm not sure that's wise in your condition. I value your opinion, but misery never rests and I am needed. Well, do please take good care of yourself, Lord Marsh. I'll send you my diagnosis, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Farewell. My diagnosis is you're dying. Just so quiet between the two of you. I'd imagine there would be some kind of uh, dialogue being exchanged. At least a little bit. here. Okay. Military badge. I guess we're going to hit the books on that. Search archives, search archives. Perform analysis. Well, let's start over here with the analysis. Watson, what are you doing at my table? I just need to check one thing about Lord Marsh. My intuition tells me that Lord Marsh is hiding something about his disease. His cough, in addition to his fever and his usage of strong painkillers, leads me to believe that he is seriously ill. Okay. Let's study it more closely. Sputum with tiny drops of blood. Hmm. I could take a sample and examine it under the microscope. So. I need to take a sample of it using the glass rod. Using the glass rod. Am I missing something? Add that to the. Ugh. That's not looking so good. Let us apply chemicals to color the sample. Carbol, acid alcohol, flame blue. I don't know what color to use. Acid and alcohol, methylene blue, carbol. I need a pipette. Okay. And what does Splooge do? I guess you put that down. Put it down. Put it. Put it. Let us apply chemicals to color the sample. Oh, am I just supposed to keep like adding? That's. Okay. 
little of all three. Now, let's examine the colored sample under the microscope. So put it here. Examine the stain in detail, look for unusual elements. There we go. A mycobacterium. It appears that Lord Marsh is seriously ill. Holmes, this is no longer a laughing matter. It is just as I feared Lord Marsh is suffering from tuberculosis. You don't say. Yes, I do say. And Holmes, he will die if he is not transferred to a sanatorium as soon as possible. And yet both Lord Marsh and Dr. Fisher are doing their best to hide this fact. How interesting. But why? Why indeed, Watson? Oh, but... Oh, dear God. You don't think that Lord Marsh contracted tuberculosis while aiding the poor? That's man? not good. How terrible. I have a commitment that I can't possibly cancel. Holmes, during my absence, please be extremely careful. Put bad stain on his reputation. This disease is highly contagious. And remember that we have women at home. That put a bad stain on his reputation and it would just make everything look bad. Thank you, Miss Alice. Until later. I'll see you soon, Caitlin. Where have you been? Our neighbor lent me a book. She is so kind. I think she likes you. <laughs> I doubt that. How is your investigation going? It's going. Dracula? Yes. It's forbidden reading at my boarding school. Did you know? Well, well. So let's see. It is thrilling. <gasps> I can't <laughs> wait to tell all my friends about this. So looking at everything. Where are we going next? We can tell he already has tuberculosis. I guess we need to do a little bit of looking. Maybe I don't really have to do research on that part. Maybe the map will tell me. A map of London and its surroundings. Could be useful. A map of London and its surroundings. Could be useful. Okay, examine. Well, let's examine the wolf jack first. Military badge. Uh, technology history. Let's do history. Civilization acts a union. Military badge. That's not the one I need. I doubt it would be. That sounds French. That's not the one I need. That's not the one I need. I really don't think it'd be in the newspaper. Wounds and injuries, marks and symbols, badges and medals. That's easy. A wolf jack is a half wolf and half jackrabbit. It was used by the Levat, sc Levat Scouts as a self descriptive nickname. The Levat Scouts formally became the British Army's first marksman unit. Ah. Here it is. Metals, bones, injuries, chemistry, criminalistics, nope. I just need a map. That's not the Grunson's Oak is a strange and mysterious tree that grows in Epping Forest. The origin of its name is unconfirmed, although there are many legends of fables connected with it. Some people say that over centuries, witches performed their ceremonies near this tree, and that these rites have assured that whoever may touch the trunk of Oakson Tree will be cursed for all time. Here it is. Grunston's Oak is in Epping Forest. That's the place indicated on George Hurst's map. <laughs> Let's 
sounds like it's time to head to the forest. There we go. Let's try to find the place from the hand-drawn map. Like, oh god. That's a lot to go through. Here, let's start from the top. Start from the top and just go with it. We're looking for a pond. It's kind of what this looks like, but. Uh, farm, wood, wood, pond, lodge, fire side. White Chapel Plain. Right now, I think I'm just supposed to be matching a picture. So it's a circle with a fork coming out of both sides. So we're looking for three roads intersect. Three roads intersect. Uh, wait a minute, is that what we're looking at? Three right here. One, two, three, looks like right here. Is this what we're looking at? Is that it? Do I just... Here it is. Drat. I'll need to hurry if I want to find out what's going on at the forest. I tried to do that earlier. Father, that boy Wiggins, does he come here very often? He helps occasionally in some of my cases. Why do you ask? I'd like to talk to him. Talk to him? <laughs> Father, back at school there are only girls to talk to, and they are so boring. I'm sure Wiggins has lots of exciting stories to tell about his life in <laughs> London. It would be so romantic. How should he act? Act reasonable. Caitlin, you know that Wiggins hasn't had the most fortunate life. That only makes him more interesting. Oh, Kate. <sighs> I'll leave you alone now. <laughs> well, let's do a quick run through. Let's look at the clues. Oh, everything stopped. Invitation. I was invited to the meeting today. George Hirsch knew about the meeting between Lord Marsh's companions. Okay, there was that. Let's go back. Scouts. They were the British Army's first marksman unit. Uh, wait a minute. 
was the wound he sustained because he was a scout. So he was a marksman. Newspaper article. As many hunting trophies. One Marsh's companions are members. George Hurst was interested. George Hurst collected information about the poppers. He did. Logical conflicts between deductions. They can be resolved by switching to alternative deductions. Yeah, they were connected. George Hurst knew about some of the people who had gone missing from the special education program, yes. Lord Marsh and his companions entered the forest that was indicated on George Hurst's map to hold a meeting. Okay. Go to the forest. Yep. May be what we're looking at. Okay, well, actually, that's gonna be a good spot to leave us right there, guys. On a good note, let's see how this goes with Sherlock running off to the forest to see what's going on. I have a feeling it's gonna tie into the the beginning. Remember the introduction of the game where he's running through the forest as a hunter. It's kind of my thoughts on the matter it's going to somehow all lead up and tie back to there he's a hunter so no marksman we've got this pretty interesting mystery going through it's not too strange i'm wondering how everything's going to tie in with everything that's going on with hearst because of him having tuberculosis and it's looking bad for him because he was messing with the peasants and he got tuberculosis i wonder how that's going to get spun anyway i guess we'll find out so make sure you come back next time for part part four <laughs> of Sherlock Holmes, the devil's daughter. Until then guys, take it easy and see you later. Bye.